Okay, I think we can start. Okay. All right, guys. Good morning. I mean, good evening. Yeah, today is a little delay. We have we had little delay because I was also attending some uh, CCNA session from Curtin University, and uh, so that took some time. So I presenting. I'm presenting this session here at this time. Anyway, good evening, Sanju. Right, so we are going to talk about module four. So before I start, I'll just tell you what are the things you have in module four. Again, you have five chapters. So in this, basically in this module, you are studying a little different from what you have studied before. You're going to discuss about. You're going to learn about internet security. Okay, what we have seen previously was network security. How we provide security in a network. Uh, end to end to end, we can do some cryptographic algorithms, and from server to client, we can have this key distribution centers, and what are those certification authorities? All those network security terms we were discussing. But here in this chapter, it's in this module, you are going to learn something called as internet security. So you have to understand. Uh, There's a very small difference between these two terms: network security and internet security. So I will just tell you in brief. First of all, let me acknowledge some of the students here. So Sanju, Vishujit, Harshita, Anushka, Yukta, Jayashish, Menka, Harika, and Anjali. Welcome. Good evening. Right. So this is a slight difference between internet security and network security. So when I say internet security, how do you access internet you use some kind of devices right and uh, these secure uh, these things which is not secure let's say some kind of uh, malwares they can be entered into your systems through through access of internets and one more thing guys uh, this is chapter number 19 i think 18 19 so uh, in the in the drive itself where where i have uploaded all these uh, ppts <coughs> sorry so all these ppts there there were some chapter number 16 17 and i think 18 which is not included in your syllabus actually and but they talk about your cell, cell phone security and some other uh, vulnerabilities things those are not included in your in in this uh, syllabus so you can skip those This is actually your module number four, chapter two. Your module number four, chapter one, talks about wireless, wireless land security. That I will cover in the next session. But this is a fairly familiar topic. You have heard about these viruses, worms, and other val malwares. So we'll discuss this. So good evening once again, Adil, Kirtana, Sparsha, Abhishek, Harshita. Good evening. Right. So. So, what are the different chapters you are going to study? Wireless land security. Basically, uh, some standards. We'll talk about some standards. Today, we'll take on wireless, worms, and other mal malwares. Another chapter we have here is devices such as firewalls. You're going to talk about. You're going to learn about firewalls. Also, another kind of uh, security measures like intrusion prevention and detection. How you can do? That is one more chapter. and last one you have is web security so again there is one more new term you have internet security network security and now web security okay also there is one more called as cell phone security so these things are almost same but there is there is some slight difference so you have to know the difference of those so anyway we'll talk about this viruses 
now uh, you guys very well know what is viruses what is worms so and and if i say sorry about that sound if i say viruses and worms which is more harmful what you will tell which is more harmful virus or worm you can type in the chat which is more harmful in your uh, in your words what do you think which is more harmful within welcome good evening Ashita, good evening. Virus is more harmful or worms? Virus. Okay, virus is ha more harmful. Good evening, Asher. Well, basically, I would say these both. Uh, okay, Adil says worms. Okay, worm. Okay, wo both are basically both have a lot of disastrous intent. They can do a lot of damage to the system but why i will uh, prefer I, why would i why would i say worm is more disastrous or more can, can do more damage because the speed with which worm propagates in the system or group of systems it's it is much more much faster it's much more dangerous than a virus because you know virus needs a host to propagate or to get into a system right whereas worms uh, it's like just nothing but like community spread that's warm and warm can replicate himself even even virus can replicate itself but warm does it uh, much faster rate okay so that is why i would say warm is more disastrous that's the only reason good evening vandana yeah good answer guys good answer thank you now we'll talk about some characteristics of virus now virus this uh, is infected in a program let's say there is a program the virus code small code it's, it's a form of a small code it will be ex uh, inserted into into the program now this small virus code it will be executed first now one of the first task of virus in any code is to seek okay any other programs that is not yet infected with virus and then pass on that infection to one or more of them that is how virus works this virus or any any of the coronavirus or anything right it looks for someone who is not infected not a truly malicious virus it may perform actions such as in terms of computer such as deleting certain files or modifying sub certain entries and all now execution of this virus code small code is followed by execution of host original program the code is very small now this virus code uh, may not always located at the start of the infected file sometimes this virus code can be prepended as well as appended to the host file now virus code can be split into separate seg segments and uh, the infected file uh, you know can get into your system in most cases what happens the size of the infected program is larger than the original host program you would have seen when you download some file it says 76 mb but you download from some uh, third party so, uh, websites it download something extra okay so that that is nothing but some small virus code it doesn't happen usually I'm just giving an example okay so what but what the in other sense uh, okay what else a virus can do one of the characteristics characteristics features of many viruses is set of system calls they make they make system calls so system calls what are the use of system calls we in os we have studied system calls are used by application programs to request services from your operating system okay so they are able to made uh, changes to read and write files new start new processes establish tcp connections some viruses uh, make system calls to copy their own code to other files create and modify entries to windows registry or search for a particular contact or email or uh, contact in a email such these kind of suspicious calls are you know de definitely uh, detect some kind of a presence of virus so whereas worms where does worm stands okay it's a standalone program okay worms is a standalone program pujita good up, good evening right so they are commonly classified based on their 
based on their propagation now what are these uh, worms uh, what are their characteristics their characteristics are these thing okay okay these things worm characteristics you can see that uh, enhanced targeting okay see that part enhanced targeting basically they they these worms are uh, their most important attribute of worm is to is that uh, the infection to other computer to infect other computers so these worms are pre programmed such a way that they have this target like just like a missile launched to a target they have a target right here also they they when they are launched they are launched to specify or to uh, do some specific task unless they are uh, unless they are dead unless uh, until they are alive their do job is to go for the target now so the worms that spread through email for example have a very easy way to figure out their targets all they have to do is look into victims mailbox or email address book to find set of targets maybe some some mail they have sent at some point so look at that particular address in case of mobile worm let's say there's a mo mobile worm it obtains phone numbers of its potential victims from the phone book or cell phones uh, hosting the worm or cell phones directory uh, in case of web worms it uses search engine to harvest urls of potentially uh, vulnerable targets there's one more one more thing called as internet scanning worms so it scans ip ip address space so these are some example of one of the characteristics of worm it has targeting then you have <coughs> you have enhanced speed now these worms uh how, how what do you think how can they enhance their speed in 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 the internet if we talk about internet or a complete osi model who is responsible for transport of uh, messages or data it is the role of transport layer right now there is uh, we can use either tcp protocol to transport or udp protocol right which is faster obviously udp so some uh, some of what another feature of uh, worms is to you know to immediately change their uh, mode of transport from tcp to to udp to you know enhance their speed in terms of targeting someone udp is connectionless there is uh, no reliability so worms can use this kind of uh, mechanism and they can also uh, worm, worms can also make use of concept of multiple threading right so they they replicate themselves now they can uh, also re reduce infection latency by targeting a buffer overflow all these things are are there okay so these are nothing but uh, one of the characteristics enhanced targeting enhanced speed then we have enhanced capabilities this is the thing i was talking about polymorphic metamorphic so what is the difference between these two terms so basically uh, most worms have unique unique and very distinct signature signature is nothing nothing but in terms of pattern of bits usually uh, what language code they have written in which appears all the uh, appears in all the instances of the worm like when i say all instances of worm worms has different instances when it replicates or duplicates or uh, you know divides it, it other worms can have different signature now these worm virus signatures are key to detect them right now there is some it involves some also uh, uh, there is some involvement of sophisticated techniques or uh, te sophisticated techniques to avoid its detection just like if i say coronavirus it is uh, its uh, its pattern its dna pattern or whatever the pattern is to identify what kind of virus is is no, not known it's a completely new thing right so it, it's it's very difficult just like that in worms uh, the signature changes okay using some sex sophisticated techniques so how will i define a polymorphic worm a polymorphic worm have to be decrypted before being executed okay this suggests that uh, the uh, decryption routine is not sent in i mean not in clear so it 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 is in the uh, encrypted format it has to be decrypted right 
फिर वॉट इज वॉट इज नेक्स्ट वन एनहेंस डिस्ट्रक्टिव पावर सो लेट्स से दे दे हैव गिवन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कोड रेड निमडा विटी वॉम सो वॉट आर दीज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दिस विटी वॉम इट वॉज लॉन्च इन टू थाउजेंड फोर एंड इट वॉज एक्चुअली सम काइंड ऑफ डिफरेंट वॉम हेयर इट इज द फर्स्ट वॉम टू कैरी अ डिस्ट्रक्टिव पे लोड एंड वॉट इट डिड इट डिलीटेड अ रैंडम सेक्शन ऑफ विक्टिम्स हार्ड डिस्क विच लेट टू सिस्टम क्रैश इट विच लेट टू सिस्टम क्रैश ओके श्रुति गुड इवनिंग अच्छी गुड इवनिंग वेलकम गाइज सो जस्ट लाइक दिस वी हैव एग्जाम्पल अबाउट दिस now code red this code red and nimda basically these are uh, given in case studies so you can read about it what is happening i'll, I'll just tell you what happens uh, just like we have apache server we used to have microsoft iis web server i'm talking about web server two web server we have apache web and iis so this was this was code red was uh, infected in that kind of uh, iis web server so it it did a lot of uh, it infected lot of uh, Uh, let's say millions of uh, iis servers or computers running these servers okay then one more we have was uh, slammer it is not mentioned here okay here it is mentioned slammer okay that is internet scanning worms we'll we'll talk about that so basically what are the worm characteristics enhanced targeting speed capabilities and destructive power and now we go back now question we can ask is explain classes of worms so classes of worms there are five classes of worms you have to tell they are internet scanning worms email worms peer to peer worms p2p is nothing but peer to peer worms web worms and mobile worms so in uh, there is uh, everything is given actually in detail you look at this internet scanning worms now when i say internet scanning worms i think i just told you before when a worm is using internet uh, scanning of the internet is it is looking for some specific thing that is ip addresses okay now one of the characteristics of internet scanning worm is uh, they are self activated that is very very important they are self activated now so there is no intervention of human so uh so that distinguish them from other types of worms like email peer to peer and web worms now this category of worms is called as internet scanning for the reason because they inter scan the internet looking for vulnerable machines how they find out vulnerable machines by looking at their different different ip addresses right how will we know someone's address by looking at uh, basically uh, ip address is your logical address right so that they so they scan your ip address so navya welcome good evening so this is nothing but your uh, internet scanning worms okay so next thing what we have is so they have given the example of code red and slammer okay so just like code red we had this uh, another worm slammer uh, it, it is like uh, if you read about some attack called as sql injection techniques or sql Uh, attacks you will find out this kind of uh, uh, example they would have given slammer is one of the worm that is well known there okay so okay another thing they have given is uh, worm propagation models basically they will not ask you this worm propagation model because uh, this is just like just like a case study a comparison of uh, uh, human to this system so basically if i say if i talk about simple epidemic model okay this is very uh, well known now you will be very able to, you will be able to understand this so simple epidemic model is used to study spread of infectious disease among humans in uh, that is your that is your appropriate starting point that right what we have having now so this model uh, basically this model assumes that there are only two people of the entities in the population so either an individual is success uh, is suspicious or he is is infected so, uh, just assume in that way so that infected in with individual can infect a another person another suspicious person 
you know once infected the person remains infected or does not recover so basically for that they have given us whole uh, derivation whole model of that and basically and and that is also used to uh, calculate the the future how of this per one particular uh, of one particular country or one particular region how is going to you know uh, what is going to happen to the growth of the infection in the com upcoming years and all those that is a, that that is part of some kind of advanced uh, calculus this thing okay so this this is one simple epidemic model you you are not don't be bothered about this this may, may not be asked to you but i'll just tell you in brief one more thing kermack and mac kendrick model so this is one more model now this model uh, you know is more accurate and it uh, let's just just like a spread of a human infectious disease it it uh, it tries to make accu uh, accuracy of that considering three categories of people in simple ep epidemic we had two people only one is infected one is you know suspicious that he can be caught with that virus now there uh, let's say the those who are suspicious they will call it call it as state s those who are infectious let will call them as i and those who are neither th those are the individuals who are cured or those who have succumbed to that disease okay so initially all the individuals in the population are suspicious M means they all can be uh, caught with the virus suspicious means vulnerable okay imagine in that way so there's a complete model they have given right okay so uh, what we saw first char characteristics first char category of worm was internet scanning worms okay next thing you have is email worms also called as topological worms what are they f uh, specialized into focus targets and or spreading of these worms is faster so you can tell it spreads from infected from your uh, sorry propagates through your infected email so you can tell uh, it scans all the address book in your email and sends uh, or it retrieves a copy of uh, addresses of all the contacts and you know scan all the complete email and uh, and locates the target and affect that individual or individual machine so example they have given is so big so big is nothing but one of the uh, name of worm that was uh, example of email worm now uh, it can carry different types of uh, you know images uh, different kind of data can be of any data so another kind of worm we have is peer to peer worm it's nothing but peer to peer worm so what sorry about that sorry so what is p2p worm peer to peer now you know what is client server architecture you know what is peer to peer architecture now which is more which is better in your views what what would you uh, prefer which model is best or uh, in terms of uh, security and control i am giving you the scenario also in what measures you are uh, telling which is better in terms of security and control client server model or peer to peer model so can you can type in the chat which one do you think it's better in terms of security and control or overall management so anyone has an answer of this question right so let it be client server yes good why because a server there's a is a manager is a controller it can serve different different various clients there is a control there is a management there is a security in that whereas in peer to peer what happens data may not be available to the next peer instead he will be communicating to next his uh, subsequent peer or his subsequent peer and so on so basically the client another client on the peer let's call it as peer he may not be having data but unnecessarily the uh, it is uh, he is being asked about whether he's 
having that data or not so there is no control there is no security there's a leakage of or vulnerable thing where this can be attacked this is this, this can be you know uh, not suited for security and management okay so that's the reason and peer to peer worms so it it's a, it's a network massively distributed system computers of computers where each peer or node plays a role of both yeah and one more thing both uh, in each and every peer can acts as both client and server it can acts as client for another server or server for another client so you have the example of a uh, very good example of torrents how do you ex download movies and so on go songs you know that is a kind of a piracy so these are uh, used for principally uh, they are used for sharing files which can contain songs image videos and extra uh, uh, other things so each peer maintains within itself a shared folder of files in the network that is willing to share it with others uh, since there is no security one peer will tell i will i have the data i'll share it to you but before sharing the data he will add some kind of a worm and he will send the data to him that will when the user download that files he, it will be affecting his system okay unknowingly right so to understand how peer to peer worm spread you need to know uh, you have to you have to know the complete knowledge about how peer to peer network operates okay there is how it operates there is no centralized server and they uh, there is nothing but it's a it's a network which is nothing but like a logical network of peers two peers are said to be neighbors at a given point of time if there is a active active tcp connection between them okay so that is your peer to peer worms yeah and there is that is scalable now what do you understand by term scalable or scalability we have we talk about the, all these things scalability fault tolerance quality of service and uh, security what are these four pillars of network what does it mean so fault tol fault tol if i talk about fault tolerance is nothing but uh, having a redundant disk for the data let's say how you how you are provided with uh, service all the time because every time server makes a backup to secondary server if one server fails secondary server will serve your data that is redundancy or nothing but fault tolerance whereas scalability uh, so let's say we have a network of 100 users or 100 peers in this case we have 100 peers peer network right 100 peers they are operating with each other so if if another 200 peers or 20 peers are added to the network it will not affect operation of previous 100 peers so that is nothing but scalable it can scale up right more users are added it will not result in depletion of bandwidth to anyone okay that's that's how it is quality of service and security security is, not, security is nothing but about your uh, securing the like we don't want any unauthorized person to access our system that is security quality service what is quality of service basically we have how much what what are the different types of data that we transmit over a network its voice is video or simple data simple text or simple data so who has most more importance or preference uh opening a website or uh doing a voice over ip call obviously a voice over ip call or video or a video conferencing has a higher preference than simple access of web page or data so that will given give, give will, that will be given more importance that is quality of service okay and th those things are clear right next thing is uh, okay peer to peer worm is done now we have is web worms when was when web worms is associated with here case study they are given a case study as xss worm so you read about that so how these web worms are different they differ from mal malware such as internet scan internet scanning worms in several ways ways first of all okay 
many web worms are executed in browsers which run on different hardware now we have soft browser nothing but uh, browser nothing but uh, you you can use it in your laptop computer server mobile phone different different platforms now web worms are written in high level language like what other language you use for, to interact with web and uh, you have languages like angular javascript and so on and now one more thing do you guys understand the difference between what is internet and what is web okay you should know difference between web and internet internet is nothing but uh, where all the data is stored or where from where all the data can be accessed from or read from but how do you access that data you make use of web pages that is nothing but your web fine so they are written in high level language and these many many of other worms other the other worms are written in assembly language but this web worms are written in high level language like uh, usually javascript so it it uh, it can when you uh, it can be okay what else why companies or why organization tell you to use only google chrome or uh, opera or something like uh, mozilla firefox they will not rec uh, tell you to uh, install different random browsers because they have some vulnerability to uh, you know download some malicious code into your system that's one reason okay another category of worms we have is mobile worms okay this is very simple one mobile worms or deals with cell phone security now this is most prevalent because new generation they are using smartphones so smartphones has combined functionality of all all or simple cell phone or or a low end pc right so they so they may be used for storing confidential documents communicating via email sms and taking photographs they are feature rich applications that run on a complete operating system now most common operating system uh, if you if you remember before android before android we had something called as uh, nokia was very famous if you remember nokia was <coughs> really really famous before android came into picture back in 2010 2008 and do you remember what kind of operating system these uh, these uh, nokia phones used to operate with can anyone tell in the chat if you remember what kind of <coughs> operating system was used in this uh, those phones during that times okay you can tell iphone was used uh, was launched during that times iphone they were running completely different operating system but what about this nokia any any idea what kind of operating system they were using no idea okay i'll tell you so they were using op operating system such as which is called as symbian operating system symbian operating system but later on it was found it is lot of vulnerabilities are there in that operating system so immediately we move to windows mobile or line uh, you know e windows mobile and immediately after that android because uh, okay one more thing here we are talking about bluetooth now uh, another kind of malware which can be transmitted to your mobile is through your bluetooth so bluetooth is your both bo both a communication technology and a protocol stack now it's a short range wireless communication right what is the range of bluetooth is 100 not 100 10 meters somewhere between two devices nowadays this new version of bluetooth lets you connect to multiple devices by at one at one time i think you can connect to bluetooth 4.0 we have so you can connect to four or five devices i guess or maybe two i'm not sure so it used to have 2.4 gigahertz soft short wave radio technology it's a complex technology and it's a multi-layered protocol okay so what can happen how how uh, worm can propagate to your system through your bluetooth app because sometimes 
Bluetooth requires something a procedure called as pairing where key is computed between two participating devices now this pairing was not used to used to be there before so sometimes you will keep your bluetooth device open some some users will be looking for you know open bluetooth active devices and they will send some data just like that uh, okay all those things are there you have this uh, example of uh, some mobile phone which are which you can operate you know you can you operate uh, uh, air conditioners with using your mobile mobile phones okay using some kind of bluetooth technology I, I guess right so so basically this has improved over the years but it was known to have a lot of vulnerabilities right so the last topic actually is your botnets so what do you understand by botnets botnets nothing but uh, like let's say army of computers or army of bots connected to internet uh, remotely and who, it, who controls all these things it is connect, uh, controlled by some person or you can call it a bot master now if i use one bot to you know attack a particular target i will call it as dos attack denial of service attack i'll keep sending using one computer i'll keep sending request over and over again so that server responds to me only and it will not serve the genuine clients original clients and i will consume all the and uh, you know computing power uh, resources and i will deplete all the resources from the server and if i use not one computer but 100 computers 100 bots to do the same task that is called a distributed denial of service okay that that is much faster to attack and it's much serious now so this, this is nothing but this is achieved by something called as botnets now they they, they have given uh, it can comprise of tens of thousands or even millions of bots yes nothing but this it is one bot is nothing but one computer one computer can have programs which can further divide you know in a hierarchy it can keep dividing itself uh, to form multiple bots okay it can uh, what is what is the term it can divide and multiply right so so this is uh, this is a very serious botnet thing it so what it can contains is some kind of a log key loggers and other forms of spyware these keystroke uh, keystroke loggers key loggers uh, are nothing but some kind of a malwares uh, which you know put which is which is put in under the category of spywares basically the purpose itself is to spy the passwords from the users okay so early botnets were used as some um, irc servers and cnc servers cnc servers is nothing but command and control server okay irc is nothing but internet relay chat it is used for uh, op file sharing in open or mu sending multicast messages okay all these things uh, and obviously the role or the purpose was is to spread infection to different different uh, targets even you can you know these bots can perform all the malware uh, tasks like to to start of a you know to make a attack which is of which can consist of virus worm or even trojan you know what is a trojan right trojan horse or trojan it uh, appears to be a genuine software but uh, in, instead it is a harm it's a harmful software it's a harmful software we call it as malware it it will show you uh, like it is working as a genuine thing but it is not so there is a role of botnets it can do all these things so, so for a case study they have given storm bot botnet so read about this, this case studies and this chapter is totally about these viruses bombs and later we have other malware such as botnet so usually what question comes in this chapter is i'll tell you so this is very very important the question main question 10 mass question they ask is what is you know differentiate between worms and viruses for two marks and what are the characteristics of worm characteristics of worm is this uh, 
enhanced targeting enhanced speed enhanced capability destructive power and explain the different categories of worms five categories of worms are there that's the question actually there's a one question in the complete chapter and they might ask you about two marks four marks about what is a botnets but they they will only ask about this what are the uh, categories of worms so that's all about this chapter actually so we'll discuss in the next session about firewalls why we have firewalls so that's all from my side thank you guys and make sure you put, hit a like on this video if you feel this is imp you you have understood understood something so make sure you hit the like leave a like and also for any notification you can click on subscribe whenever i'm live you can know so that's all from my side guys and uh, please fill the form i'll just send you right away uh, make sure you fill it very soon okay and that's all from my side thank you thank you all i'll end the stream now thank you right guys